Guyana, a stunning South American nation, home to a rich blend of cultures. But beneath the surface of this multicultural mosaic, a deep-seated tension simmers between its Afro-Guyanese and Indo-Guyanese populations. A silent yet pervasive enemy called internalised racism fuels this divide. In this video, we journey into the heart of this beautiful country, unearthing its tumultuous history, the hidden impacts of internalized racism, and the brave efforts to bridge a centuries-old divide. Join us as we explore the unseen battles and unheard stories of Guyana. Situated on the North Atlantic coast of South America, Guyana is a country of stunning natural beauty. From the vast rainforests and majestic rivers to the vibrant city life, Guyana presents a captivating blend of influences. The nation's unique flavour comes from the fusion of Amerindian, African, Indian, Chinese, Portuguese and British cultures. Known as the land of many waters, Guyana is the third smallest country in South America. It's the only English-speaking nation on the continent and shares borders with Brazil, Venezuela and Suriname. Now let's delve deeper into its cultural tapestry. Despite being geographically located in South America, politically and culturally, Guyana aligns more with the Caribbean countries. It is a member of several international organisations, such as the United Nations, the Caribbean Community, the Commonwealth of Nations and the Non-Aligned Movement. Now, let's delve deeper into its cultural tapestry. When it comes to ethnic composition, Guyana is primarily divided between two major groups, the Indo-Guyanese and the Afro-Guyanese. The Indo-Guyanese, making up around 40% of the population, are descendants of indentured labourers brought from India in the 19th century. The Afro-Guyanese, comprising around 30% of the population, trace their lineage back to the African slaves brought by the British. These two groups have been cohabiting in this nation for centuries, building communities side by side, sharing the same markets, schools and public spaces. Yet their shared history is far from harmonious, fraught with discord and division that traces back to the time of their ancestors, a silent, pervasive enemy we know as internalised racism. The roots of Guyana's ethnic tensions run deep, back to the era of colonial rule. The Afro-Guyanese story begins in the early 17th century with the Atlantic slave trade. African men, women and children were forcibly brought to the New World by European colonisers, primarily the Dutch and later the British. In Guyana, these African slaves were made to work on sugar plantations under brutal conditions, laying the foundation for the Afro-Guyanese community. In 1834, a new chapter began. Slavery was abolished in all British colonies, with full emancipation coming into effect in Guyana on August 1st, 1838, following a transitional period called Apprenticeship. This day is still celebrated as Emancipation Day in Guyana. The abolition of slavery in 1838 left the plantations severely understaffed, leading the British to look elsewhere for labour. Their gaze turned to India. As we move from the abolition of slavery in 1838, we enter a new era, marked by a system barely distinguishable from the shackles of servitude it was meant to replace, the indentured labour system. Indians, mostly from the modern-day states of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, were recruited as indentured labourers. Enticed by promises of a better life, they signed contracts they barely understood and undertook a perilous journey across the seas. Upon reaching Guyana, the reality that met these immigrants was far from the rosy picture painted by the recruiters. They found themselves contracted for up to five years of rigorous labour on sugar plantations, living in cramped quarters and paid pitiful wages. Over the next 80 years, around 238,000 Indian labourers arrived in Guyana, marking the birth of the Indo-Guyanese population. Despite these harsh circumstances, the indentured labourers clung to their cultural roots. They maintained their languages, religious practices, culinary traditions and other aspects of their culture. Over time, this community became the Indo-Guyanese population, forming a significant part of the multicultural tapestry that is Guyana. However, the colonial powers fostered a system of segregation – keeping the Indo-Guyanese and Afro-Guyanese populations apart, often pitting them against each other. This divide-and-rule strategy laid the groundwork for the ethnic tensions we see in Guyana today. 
To understand the deep-seated ethnic tensions between the Indo-Guyanese and Afro-Guyanese populations, we must first understand what we mean by internalised racism. It's a form of racial oppression where marginalised racial groups believe consciously or unconsciously in the negative stereotypes about themselves that are propagated by the dominant society. Internalised racism is not a natural state of mind, but is learned and instilled over time. In Guyana, this was fostered through colonial rule, which imposed Western racial hierarchies and sought to divide the Indo-Guyanese and Afro-Guyanese populations. Arguably, the most striking manifestation of internalised racism in Guyana lies in the realm of politics. The political landscape of the country is deeply entwined with ethnic identity. The People's Progressive Party, or PPP, and the People's National Congress, PNC, are the two primary political entities. And their supporter bases? They predominantly fall along ethnic lines. The PPP is widely supported by the Indo-Guyanese and the PNC by the Afro-Guyanese. To truly understand the root of political violence in Guyana, we must look back to the country's struggle for independence in the 1960s. An Indo-Guyanese leader, Chedi Jagan, emerged as a prominent figure during this time. He was a charismatic Marxist who attracted a large following and seemed poised for power. But his rise didn't go unnoticed. Declassified CIA documents revealed that the United States, fearing the establishment of a communist state in the Western Hemisphere during the height of the Cold War, instigated a campaign of civil unrest in Guyana to prevent Jagan from taking power. This externally fuelled campaign exacerbated existing ethnic tensions. It stirred the pot of civil unrest and violence broke out between Afro-Guyanese and Indo-Guyanese communities, a division that was politically exploited. Fast forward to the early 2000s, a period marked by an upsurge in violence that left deep scars on Guyana's social fabric. In less than a decade, over 400 people, mostly Afro-Guyanese, lost their lives in brutal street battles. The violence wasn't random. It was fuelled by criminal gangs, many of which were affiliated with the country's two main political parties. As these gangs battled each other, they also clashed with security forces, leading to a deadly and chaotic situation. In the wake of this turmoil, families were left grieving, communities were shattered, and trust between the Indo-Guyanese and Afro-Guyanese communities further eroded. While the divide between the Afro-Guyanese and Indo-Guyanese populations is profound, it's important to remember that it doesn't define the entirety of Guyanese society. There are many individuals, communities and organisations working tirelessly toward unity and reconciliation. At the grassroots level, we see community leaders fostering dialogues, organising inter-ethnic cultural exchanges and initiating projects that promote cooperation and understanding between the two ethnic communities. On a national scale, initiatives such as the Ethnic Relations Commission, established in the early 2000s, aim to promote harmony and good relations between ethnic groups. Furthermore, there are political leaders advocating for unity, challenging the status quo and breaking free from the ethnic-based political pattern. And let's not forget the role of international organisations supporting peace-building efforts in Guyana. They provide resources, training and support to local initiatives aiming to bridge the ethnic divide. In the younger generation, there's a sense of hope. With increasing intermarriage, global influences and a growing consciousness about the need for unity, many young Guyanese are challenging old prejudices and working towards a future where ethnicity does not dictate destiny. While the road to unity is long and filled with obstacles, these concerted efforts give us a glimpse of what a united Guyana could look like. And while the past cannot be changed, the future can be shaped. Every day, in small ways and big, the people of Guyana are writing a new chapter for their country. Thank you for taking this journey with us today. We hope this deeper understanding of Guyana inspires you to think about the complexities of ethnic divisions, not just in Guyana but globally, and the possibilities that exist for unity and reconciliation. Join us next time as we continue to explore more untold stories from around the world. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.